we're on easy street and it feels so sweet because the world is but a treat when you're on easy street welcome to the easy street radio show hosted by rob scribner grab a cup of coffee and let's get started hey thanks for watching our video please take the time to like subscribe and share our videos all over the whole wide world this will help us grow also note buying some of our merchandise or donating to our channel is very helpful also thank you for supporting our show hi guys and welcome to easy street and uh today's kind of a special day because what you can't see right now is our new little baby now this <laughs> let me back up here this is a new little German Shepherd we got and she's a sweetheart and uh, <laughs> she's uh, her this is her first day with us and uh, she's been a darling uh, she got a bath <laughs> and she handled that really well oh. be a good girl look at you What can I say? So we don't have a name for this little girl yet, <clears throat> but uh, um, feel free to give her suggestions. She's a little bit shy, but playful, very brave. Um, and uh, she's loving and trusting. And uh, <laughs> she's never been in the studio before. And uh, she's... Uh, getting along with our big dog really well and uh, let me hold her up a little more and uh, she's gonna be a big dog and uh, let me hold her up here like this anyway she uh, she needs your love and support <laughs> so uh, anyway if you get a chance uh, in the comments below uh, and she smells like a puppy uh, in the comments below uh, if you have any ideas for a good name for her, um, she's uh, just been a doll. <laughs> anyway, she's the newest member of our family with Cinder, and uh, <laughs> she doesn't know what to think of all that. What do you think of that? She's a big girl. Anyway, she's a German Shepherd, a uh, working dog with a street back. And uh, she's only nine weeks old, and uh, she's very healthy and uh, not too rebunctious. Just a great puppy, and uh, she makes noises. She does. So what do you think, guys? She a keeper? <laughs> anyway, I told you when we get a chance, we'll give you a chance to say hi to her. And uh, let me get her toy. She kind of likes this little toy. But she's probably wondering what is going on. What is going on? Can you hear? Oh. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed meeting our new puppy with no name yet. No name, but we're working on it. She's a. She needs her mom, which is Sherry. <laughs> we're definitely making her kind of Sherry's dog and uh, there she is well I hope you had a <laughs> got a kick out of meeting her and uh, we got a lot of things to talk about today so let's move on Ranger Rob poopy bags it's now time to get excited about picking up your dog's waste a bigger deeper quality waste bag our bags are available at Amazon with free shipping. Get them today. Okay, guys, we are back. I hope you enjoyed seeing the new puppy. Uh, I'm sure in the future, as we get her a little bit uh, more used to us, uh, it will make more appearances. And uh, I wanted to talk about uh, the fact that this is day three of uh, the uh, proclaimed uh, 
stay at home kind of thing. Uh, I don't know exactly what the best wording is for that, but uh, Sherry and I have been trying to abide by it. We really haven't been out and about much. We uh, we did pick up the puppy today when we met at a park with the people that had them and brought up the puppies there. So that was really smart because that way we weren't in their house. We we're out in the open. We kept our distances. And uh, we figured, uh, since we were thinking real hard about a dog anyway, it was a good opportunity. Uh, we're going to be home. We're hunkering down. Why not spend this time uh, with some quality time training a puppy? So that kind of justifies it. So, uh, so once again, if you guys have any ideas for names, now I'll tell you one that I'm thinking of, but it's not official, is I was thinking about... Um, uh, saber. <laughs> what do you think? Saber. I know she's a little girl, but that'll work. Saber. And, you know, it's is a German Shepherd. I don't know. It just seemed like a kind of a neat name, but I have to kind of get it past the high command. But uh, feel free to give us some comments. Uh, uh, I love to also hear what are some of the unique things you're doing if you're home? Uh, I know a lot of you guys probably have your kids at home, some of you are actually staying home. Um, also in the comments, I'd like to hear if you're staying home, are you getting some paid leave on that? Are you getting a, a sick leave? Are you just uh, um, sacrificing? Um, I'd like to hear kind of some of the stories. Uh, also, if you ever want to be interviewed um, about your scenario, some of the strange things that are happening with our uh, stay-at-home situation, uh, uh, I, I, it'd be fun to talk to you and get some uh, feedback, right? especially if I can get it from a couple of different regions, maybe East Coast, West Coast, and somewhere in the middle, uh, or even um, uh, South or uh, North. That'd be kind of cool. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your feedback. I also uh, have a chocolate lab chicken checking on me, and uh, she's all good. She's actually doing really good with this dog. So it's uh, quite amazing. So uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, you never know who comes in the office here. So uh, uh, yeah, so what are you doing for your time off? Do you have your kids at home? Are you finding some problems? And then also, uh, uh, of course, shopping and things like that are be unique. So th some of the things we've he noticed here in Arizona, traffic is definitely down. Um, the grocery stores, the second time we went was a little less pick through, but it was still really thin and there was definitely some things you just couldn't get, like try to get ragu spaghetti sauce, forget that. Uh, they, they were, the paper products were gone. A few things were coming, were back and it was only a handful of few things. So, uh, uh, yeah, so we're just getting by. Luckily, we're preppers, so we actually have everything. We're just kind of doing top-offs or maybe a couple of extra um, luxury kind of items and just uh, uh, the things we can't, couldn't get we need is we need eggs and we want to get pit, uh, potatoes. And neither one of those were available when we went to the store about two days ago. So uh, we'll be hitting the stores again maybe even tomorrow. And I'll give you kind of a report of what we're having down here in Arizona. I, uh, I'm kind of forecasting that it'll get better as people get kind of past that first initial, you know, trying to get built up for two or three weeks. Uh, once they get kind of past that, that the, the pressure I'm hoping will go down a little bit on the stores. I could be wrong. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in one of the <laughs> shows ahead of time. But, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. Uh, really hard to stop handshaking. I, I'm old school, so much, so it's so hard. I just immediately my hand goes out when I meet somebody. And I got to stop that. Uh, I have found that we're carrying, you know, uh, hand sanitizer with us everywhere we go. Uh, we use a, a lot. I, 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 we wash our hands continuously, and Sherry and I, since we're not in, this, you know, the past the 6-0 part, uh, we have to be careful. And uh, 
I understand that uh, uh, the younger generation may feel uh, invincible, but some of the reports coming out are getting a little scary about that even. Folks in their uh, 20s, 30s, and 40s may actually get this, go through the cycle and get sick, but actually um, sustain damage to their lungs. So I'm not, you know, you may bounce back all right and all that stuff, but I, I try not to catch it and uh, certainly don't spread it. Um, I know it's really easy, like who cares about people uh, if it isn't immediate friends and stuff, but you know, you could hurt your parents, you could hurt your grandparents, you could hurt some really good people that wouldn't be able to handle this uh, this virus issue. And so uh, um, really think through your actions. I know when you're young, you feel kind of invincible, uh, but there is the uh, old word out there called cause and effect. And try to stand in other, you know, other people's shoes and do your best. Now, I, I, there's a lot of young folks that are doing wonderful things and being helpful and helping deliver groceries to older folks and, and doing great things. And that is so cool. Some of the things I do really like seeing is, so, is the unity, a little more cooperation in our politics, um, a little sense of uh, patriotism. And uh, supporting our president, whether you like him as a person or not, that's not the issue. But uh, he's calling good shots. And he's reminds me of a lot of really good managers I used to know from aerospace stuff, whether you know, maybe kind of old, grungy kind of guys. But what they did is surrounded themselves with really smart people. And uh, so that's what Trump's done. He's got a really good team of really uh, smart people. Uh, heading up this task team and uh, uh, they're really trying hard to be at least a few steps ahead of it as best as you can in a big national kind of way in bureaucracy I give them a, a real thumbs up of, uh, of what they're doing forget about politics forget about it um, I don't want to hear it nobody wants to hear it. we really got bigger fish to fry we just need to work together I like the idea, for example, in 2008, Sherry and I took it hard. We got hit hard. There is no help like they're talking about now. Um, if you're in financial trouble, you're, you're in trouble. If you're going to lose your house, you're going to lose your house. If uh, There is nothing like this uh, back in the days of the recession of 2008. Uh, this is amazing. Uh, I don't want us to get used to it, but when times are tough, it's nice to know that really, if you think about it, you know, we're going to be on our lips um, here for a while with all this uh, businesses being shut down and stuff like that. But if we can go with the attitude of it's kind of like holding your breath. And then when it finally comes in, you need to take a big, deep breath and you go, oh, anyway, everything will be in place to fire up again. And what I'm really hoping is we learned our lessons on a few things like how much we offload to other countries. Finding that nationalism has its real benefits of the fact that we can be self-sustainable. Do not offload things like safety equipment and prescription drugs and things like that. Bring them back in how I'd rather pay a little more than run out of something. Um, and our oil industry, um, I don't know. I wish you. I wish you could find a way. I know it's tied into the OPEC part, and so there. But it would be neat that if we bought only our oil from our own source, and uh, that we could give them the uh, market rate dollar figure for whether what they need to make uh, to be profitable. Um, my understanding it needs to be around eighty dollars a barrel or, or plus to be profitable for the shale business, and. Uh, so uh, right now it's like twenty five thirty, and uh, my I, I don't know exactly somewhere near there, and that's hurting everybody. So what happens is the other companies are really uh, selling cheap, and they have abundance, and it's killing our uh, industries here. And uh, what it be need is we just shut off what we bought from out there and just bought it from from internal, and it intentionally bring up the price so they it could at least break even and be profitable, uh, so it doesn't hurt Americans. 
So, uh, yeah, that's some, uh, a lot of serious stuff. And uh, there's a lot of really good sh uh, YouTube channels that are doing coverage on this that are really breaking down the numbers, going through statistics, reporting on the different countries, trying to get what's really out there as far as, you know, uh, it's not just old people. That's the other thing. It's, it's not just affecting that and in people with chronic illnesses and stuff. It sounds like even our younger generation has something to worry about. Uh, they may bounce back and be okay, but they may take damage, and that's not good. So I hope uh, I like some of the trends that we're going through, but I don't like to see everybody suffering. Some people will make out better than others. Uh, Sherry and I will definitely be taking some hits. It's going to be hard. It's hard for all of us. It's nice to know we're not alone. We're all together in this. And it's kind of nice to know that we have our government trying to do what they can in their bureaucracy kind of way to help us sustain while we're all hunkering down. Uh, you know, all they're trying to do is uh, avoid the high bell curve and lower the bell curve so uh, we don't inundate our hospitals. If that happens, then we'll lose a lot of people. So uh, I hope everybody's understanding. I know it's not comfortable. I know you miss your games and you miss your uh, uh, activities in your restaurants and things like that. But there's a lot to learn from this. You know, our f grandparents, I have to say grandparents, um, had a lot of wisdom and a lot of things that they got from the Depression and the World War One and Two uh, uh, era. And uh, some of that sustained really well into the next generations and so on has faded away again. Going through an action like this teaches us all a lot about, you know, we get complacent about borders and we get, uh, oh, we should be global and all this stuff. And now you kind of look at it and you go, ooh, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. And uh, so, yeah, uh, food for thought. So uh, that's kind of my little rant. That's my little bit of concern. That's us going through day three. I'm not going to do every day uh, on online here, but as the days go on, it's going to be interesting to observe if they how they pull off some of this uh, uh, monetary help for us, how they're going to uh, get these tests out. And... Uh, I, I don't think a lot of people comprehend how big a task that is for all the things we've talked about. It's like, why don't they have the tests out? Oh, it's more than just someone saying they're going to do it, and it's more than just a company and makes them. It's a, it's, it's a chain reaction. There's the decision. There's the cost. There's the payments. There's the production, and then there's the delivery, and then delivering them to the right places. And so uh, there's a lot involved, and we need to know that. Uh, that'll make us better people and more patient and, uh, and support both sides of the parties that are doing their best to make us or help us get through this. So you got to give them credit. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Would you like better radio with great talk shows and great music? and less garbage good talk radio is your choice we have great programming great music and a great attitude we love our country we love our listeners good talk radio well we're sitting here sitting around the campfire <laughs> and, uh, I kind of wanted to ask you guys uh, in the comments below is uh, my question is what do you think we're gonna learn from this uh, I mentioned a few things in the module before of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, when you get older, you've gone through ups and downs and stuff. Typically, you can say you learned something from it or you made you a better person. What do you think we would, uh, we all will gain from either uh, personal or national or family-wise? What are some of the things you think we might have uh, learned from all this? Um, let me move my logos up here a little bit so I can see myself. By the way, don't forget you can get your Easy Street <laughs> hat from Amazon. Uh, just go to the link down in the description. Uh, by the way, 
Uh, early in the show, we got straight to the puppy, but don't forget you can find us on Good Talk Radio and uh, and lots of other platforms. Just go down to the description below, and you can find different ways to find Easy Street and check out some of the other things we do. We have a Ranger Rob cooking show. We have uh, all kinds of stuff, but uh, uh, in radio and and now puppies. <laughs> so what do you think we're going to gain from all this? Do um, you think we'll be better? You, you know, uh, old history is getting so far back that the, the newer generation, it's, it's, it's all we can do to get them to remember what World War II was all about. Um or even what Pearl Harbor was. I mean, they could, and some of them don't even know what 9-11 was. So uh, a lot of those lessons learned, they kind of fade away, and it's up to us as older folks to kind of remind them. But uh, there's always newer crises and stuff like that. Um, do you see us um, as a nation being uh, a little bit more uh, sensible about some of the things that we've put our foot down on about. For example, one thing I was really surprised to hear about was reusable bags. They're actually a problem, um, especially with the coronaviruses and other kind of viruses, because if you keep using reusable bags, they can actually get unclean, cleanly. And so uh, uh, we may want to rethink how we do that. Uh, I think really what we need to go find is uh, find um, uh, bio biodegradable bags instead um, or something like that. The reusable bag can actually be a health issue, especially in this time and during this uh, uh, while our situation is going on right now with the CV stuff. Uh, so I found I found that kind of interesting. I just heard that today. And uh, do you think... Our younger generation might reintroduce themselves to older generation, why each is important to one another. Uh, older generation hold the stories and the uh, concepts of what happened in the past, while the new generation have the energy and uh, drive to do new things. And uh, can we find that balance again? And, 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 and some of them already do. I mean, some are already there. So this isn't everybody. But... In general, a lot of our younger folks are like, ah, I'm invincible. Nothing's going to happen to me. Um, and then a lot of them got into a lot of climate change and things like that to a point that they don't realize their cause and effect, especially in a situation like now and you talk about the borders. Uh, I, right now, would love to have the borders totally locked up. And if they do have uh, people coming over, that they go through a thorough health screening and things like that. Um, and that's not even talking about trafficking and, and crime and things like that and drugs. Um, so I'm hoping, unfortunately, a crisis sometimes points out our failures or areas that we need to uh, rethink. And I'm hoping some of the things we learn out of coronavirus uh, that will help us uh, uh, be better uh, and, and realize nationalism is not a sin. Nationalism uh, gives us strength and allows us to take care of our people. And if we can take care of our people first, then it's easier for us to, to reach out and help others. Does that make sense? Uh, if you've got enough masks, you've got enough medicine, you've got your health care in good shape, and uh, everybody's cruising along right well, and the other countries are in trouble, we should be able to still help but not until we make sure that we're taking care of ourselves first. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of an opinion. I'd love to hear your ideas, hear your comments below. Uh, I'd like to um, comprehend what people are thinking out there. What are the lessons learned? What do you think we're going to be better at? Uh, do take the time and leave your comments. It's really important. And don't forget to like and share and tell everybody about our videos and about our radio stations and stuff. And uh, you get a chance, you know, go to Amazon, pick up some of our Ranger Rob poopy bags or grab a hat or something like that. It helps the channel. And, uh, uh, yeah, so let's go on. Let's move on to our next subject. You know, I find it kind of interesting. I actually haven't gone to this one chart I'm going to show you for quite a while. And I remember I was talking about it and I was like, 
I think it was at 30,000, 35,000, something like that. And now let me pull the same chart up and look at these crazy numbers. 218,000 people confirmed. There's been over almost 9,000 deaths. Wow, what a change. Um, and that's only been uh, maybe two to three weeks since I put this chart up. And that's kind of spooky. So uh, we're getting uh, towards the end of the show here. I apologize. Uh, it's um, concerning um, what we're going through. I think I did hear something that was actually quite unique that we should probably keep in mind is um, our truckers are actually having a hard time when they're moving our stuff around the country, which is so important. They're actually having a hard time finding a place to stop and eat because everything's shutting down. So uh, whenever you get a chance and you see uh, somebody in the transportation business, give them a thumbs up and a thank you. And maybe maybe set up some kind of program or do something to help them get food uh, when they're making stops. Maybe even offer to go through a drive through or something for them to pick up some food for them. Because they're limited to what they can do with their trucks. And so uh, anyway, even and you go, well, they got the big truck stops. Well, they're shutting down a lot of the restaurants and those too. So they got some issues. Um, it's definitely harder for them. Um, so anyway, uh, never really thought about that. And I'm, I, there's a lot of things I think we take for granted. And uh, we take people for granted for what they do for us. And uh, so uh, I don't know. We There's a lot of things going on that... Uh, you know, there's so many people you know, whose jobs have been sacrificed, their businesses have been shut down, and they've got to somehow survive because most likely they still got to pay for their electricity, still got to pay for their rent, still got to pay for uh, uh, payroll for some uh, issues. Um, they still got taxes. They, those things don't go away, yet the income is stopped. And yeah, hopefully the government will help uh, all these Different businesses have something to help survive. But uh, there's a lot of sacrifice going on. And it's easy to forget about those people and those services um, without trying to stand in each, other, I mean, each other's shoes. As you're going about your business and doing things and stuff, uh, ask yourself, I wonder how this is affecting that person or that person or that business or that service. Uh, from the simple things of someone who's a, tar a tattoo artist to a, um, a, play a spa to uh, haircuts to uh, restaurants and stuff like that. Those poor folks have been asked to shut their doors and receive no income, yet there's probably still some bills. So uh, that's a big sacrifice by a lot of people. Are you showing the gratitude? Are you showing the respect and the patronage and, and nationalism of what sacrifices people are making so we can try to get through this at a small bell curve instead of a, a, uh, one of those big spikes where it just wipe out our hospitals? Uh, I mean, this is going to go through, and we a lot of people are going to be affected, but if we can keep it minimal at a reasonable rate, we can maintain it and get through the bell, a little bell curve. So a little bell curve is a good thing. A spike would hurt us dramatically, and, and, and a lot of deaths would be not necessary. So uh, if you're uh, spiritual at all, put a... Throw out your uh, prayers, not only for yourself and your household and family, but for our nation and our people, for our services and production and products, uh, our leaders, all of them, uh, all of them, even the ones that might drive you crazy, put in a good word for them. Uh, I think they're kind of coming together at this particular point, and that's a good thing, and that's actually how it used to be. So... Uh, Anyway, I hope everybody's being safe out there. I hope everybody does hunker down. Let this uh, curve stay low. And uh, uh, everybody stays healthy. And if you happen to catch this thing, 
I hope your bodies are strong. I hope your faith is strong. I hope uh, you sustain it to your household only and not pass it on and uh, uh, take lots of vitamins and things like that. There's a lot of great services out there you can do online to get uh, to uh, talk to doctors and stuff, things we never had before. So uh, be strong, folks. Be American. Be a patriot. Believe in nationalism. And let's learn from this. Yeah, what a concept, huh? Let's learn from this. Anyway, guys, have a great day. Thanks for listening to Easy Street. Be safe, and it will be more puppy pictures. <laughs> Just got to do it. You can't beat puppy pictures. Anyway, guys, talk to you later. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.